Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us tonight for another exciting Bible study, God's Word Alive. Tonight, we've got a really, really exciting Bible study, and, and I've got two of my best friends on either side of me, Bert and Rocky. And uh, I, I, I want you to know, they're going to bring a lot more to the table than I am tonight. Because they, they know what they're talking about here. And I know that you're going to enjoy some of their testimonies and, and uh, stories that they're going to share tonight. And I'm going to do everything I can to let them talk tonight. So <laughs> if, if, you find, if you find me talking too much like I do a lot of times, just send me a comment there and say, Pastor Rick, we want to hear what the ladies have to say. <laughs> and we'll do that. So, Bert, would you share any housekeeping we got I before will. we get started? We're really glad to have you with us tonight. And we welcome your comments and your prayer request. And so you can do that in two different ways. You can uh, do them in the comment section on Facebook, or you can text to 479-220-7106. And uh, those things will be shared with the table. Yeah. Before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we want to invite you to be part of our, of our discussion tonight. We're going to be talking about legacies and how can we have a legacy that will touch lives if you're not involved in it. So please pour out your spirit and, and speak to our heart. Teach us something tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, tonight we're going to look at legacies. Now, everybody can make a legacy, right? Uh, right? A legacy, that's leaving behind something, uh, causing a ripple effect, you know, in, in those that, your, your descendants, your family and everything. And you, can, you can leave a positive one or you can leave a negative one. What we want to look at tonight is marriages. That's what, kind of what our theme is here this quarter of the year. We're going to be looking at marriages because God, God loves marriages. He believes in marriages. Marriages was his ideal. And so what's God's plan? For us leaving a legacy and how does that impact our lives and so some of the things we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to we're going to talk about marriages that impact generations we're going to look at how does how does this uh how does this bring glory to god when we leave a legacy in in our family we're going to look at um we're going to look at families you know like mine for example me personally uh, I didn't leave a, a, a. I didn't have a positive legacy for a long time in my life. So we're gonna. We're not only gonna look at perfect legacies. We're gonna look at what about those that were a little bit sketchy. You know, like like me. And how can we turn this around for good? And 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 uh, God can bring good out of, out of our past when we do it that way. So we're gonna look at that too to give us hope. And. Um, and so the, we're going. We're, these are just the topics we're going to look at. And I want to start tonight, though, in Deuteronomy chapter six. Deuteronomy chapter six, because this is kind of like our hallmark scripture here. God is saying, if you do this right here, this is how you're going to pass down a legacy from generation to generation to generation. So, Bert, would you would you read that for us? I this will. Is Deuteronomy chapter six, verses one through nine. Now, this is the commandment the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it, so that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. O oh, Israel, you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O oh, Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Okay. I just love that text there because basically what it's saying is is that we need to have God in our life, in our families. 
it's so easy nowadays, as busy as we are, we don't mean to be this way, but don't we get busy? <laughs> everybody gets busy. You know, you, everybody goes to work, you come home, you turn the TV on, you know, and it's so easy, believe it or not, to leave God out of your life and out of, out of, your, out of your day-to-day life. And if you're leaving Him out of your day-to-day life, that's really where your legacy is at. That's, mm-hmm. and, and so um, God is saying if you, the very first thing, to leaving a legacy that will last and have a huge impact on your family from generation to generation is put God in the center of your day to day, your day to day lives. And so, um, all right, let's let's look at. I'm going to ask some questions here to get us started here because we we whether we realize it or not, each one of us are leaving an impact, and so we want to we want to leave a positive impact legacy. So how how does our how does God use our legacies for His glory? I mean, so how would we feel that? How would we get started on that question? Um, well, in Proverbs thirteen twenty two, it talks about it as an inheritance mm-hmm. that we've received from our parents and our families, and that we need to pass that inheritance, yeah. not monetarily. I don't think that's what God's talking about. I think yeah. He's talking about a relationship and the love of Jesus to our legacy down below us. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, what he's he's wanting to see us do. Yeah, absolutely, Rocky. Yeah. I, that That's a powerful point, and that's a good way to get started here tonight. It is an inheritance. I think a lot of a lot of families now, it's easy to think the most valuable thing that I can pass down to my children is uh, giving them a good education, you know, in the world, or giving them money. But the very most important thing and we'll realize this one day, the day will come that we'll realize the most important inheritance that we can pass in our children is, is God mm-hmm. and, and living a godly life. So excellent point, Rocky. For the last two days, my little granddaughter, Harper, who's three years old, who's adorable, <laughs> has come with a little um, Ziploc bag or snack container with Fruit Loops in it. <clears throat> and... She has a a little table and chair set in my playroom, and she has brought that table and two chairs out to the living room along with the tea set for the last two days. Mm -hmm. And she says, Grammy, let's have a tea party. Ah. (laughs) And so she sits at the table and she puts a Fruit Loop, one single Fruit Loop, on each plate and in each cup. And then she tells me, Grammy, you need to pray. And so I pray for our Fruit Loops. <laughs> and, and then after I pray, she says, no, don't eat them yet. I have to pray. I love that. And, and so she, she prays. Mostly I can only hear amen because she does it so softly. But for two days in a row, each time she refills this, we have to say a prayer before we can eat it. But I thought, she's three. Right. And she already yeah. understands. That's a legacy that has been passed to her. Praise God! I love that. Good point. <clears throat> what, would you? Uh, what about the Psalms that you were that you had to share? Psalm seventy-eight, verse four. Did, or did you quote that one a while ago? Uh, that Rocky? was Proverbs thirteen twenty-two. There's a, that I was okay. talking to about the okay. inheritance. Okay, Psalm seventy-eight, verse four. Let me read this one right here. Psalm seventy-eight, verse four, and this ties in mm-hmm. beautifully with bo- what both of them, uh, both of you, had shared. We will not hide them from from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. You know, that's exactly what you were talking about with Harper. You know, we've shared these beautiful truths and God is our strength. God is our refuge. He's the He's our helper when we're going through times in our life. He's the, because you know what? Our children, they're going to face some difficult times in the future. Oh, worse they're going than to, we have. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. They're going to face things that will rock their world. Ooh. And we need to give them a solid foundation. So the most important inheritance that we can give our children, mm-hmm. the most important blessing that we can give our children is tell them, tell them, tell them to, to, to the generations come the praises of the Lord, how good God is. So that's and, and kids learn more from what they see than oh, what they hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they have to see it in our lives in order for it to really resonate and become nature, yeah. second nature. Yeah. Well, and it does. I, I 
had a habit that whenever people say something that reminds me of a song, I start singing. Yeah. <laughs> and it used to embarrass my girls when they were growing up. Mom, you got a song for everything. <laughs> <clears throat> but when Erin graduated from high school and she wrote a letter, a tribute to parents for a you know a service that they all did. And she said, my mother has a song for everything. And she said, I always vowed I would never do that. <laughs> and now I find now myself do it. doing it. A legacy. Jamie. <laughs> and my dad did it. Yeah. You know, and so it, it's, it just becomes a part of us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whether Amen. we want it to or Amen. not. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I want to say this before we go into our next question, something that really stuck out to me that, that we can share with our families out there, our marriage, got children. What you do says a lot more about what you believe than what you say you believe. Your children are watching you a lot more than they are listening to you. Mm -hmm. Powerful point there. Mm -hmm. So pick a song. Start singing Jesus Loves Me to them or something. <laughs> That's right. So, okay. All right. Very good. That's a good discussion. Uh, number two, what does this, how, how does this tie into the spread of the gospel? How, how does that, you know, God is so wise. And he knows things. He, he understands how if we apply this to our day-to-day -day life, you're going to keep the gospel flowing. Mm -hmm. But what, what's your thoughts on that? How does, this, how does this tie into the spread of the gospel? Yeah, well, I think God uses our, the, the view of our Christian family as a living example of what it's like to have the love of Jesus in our lives and in our homes. Mm -hmm. And so if we're living that day to day, we're witnessing to those around us without even realizing we're doing it. That's right. Yes. And that can go both ways, positive and negative. Yeah. So we have it to be can. careful. But... Um, I think that's kind of what, how we're spreading it through just watching mm -hmm. and, and being a Christian life and letting people see, you know, the peace and the happiness and the joy that comes from having Jesus in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And not that it comes without problems, you know, but because <laughs> it may come with more problems. But yeah. I think then it lets them see, too, that we also stand on the promises of God yes. and it'll get us through anything. And so yeah. I, it could be a positive. Rocky, that you're see. right, that uh, not only do our children watch what we do more than they listen to what we say, mm -hmm. our neighbors, mm -hmm. our, our friends, our co-workers, our classmates, mm -hmm. uh, they are all watching us. Okay. And and people have to go through stuff mm -hmm. here in 2021 now. We're going through things, and they're watching how you adapt to things. They're mm -hmm. watching how you go through things. Mm -hmm. They're watching, uh, and, and, and as they're watching, you, your your testimony, the, your gospel it, uh, is, is going out to them in a huge way mm -hmm. and impacting their lives mm -hmm. for Jesus. For, yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. I've often heard it said that Christians should be the happiest people in the world. Absolutely. We've got more hope. True. So and and people are always attracted and drawn to happy people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People be, and happy people are often some of your kindest people as well. Mm -hmm. Go go and stand in line at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And and you'll discover that um the people who don't get upset if they have to wait make an impact on everybody around them. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Good, good, good stuff here. What about, what about, I'm really interested in that right there. Uh, uh, my little grandmother, she lived to share Jesus. And many people in the church here know that, knew them very well. Um, but she was famous for her cinnamon rolls. Uh -huh. And she loved to cook. That's how she showed her love. I was yes. a recipient. Yes. yes. I, can, can I want to pause? You sure can. You? She's just like this. <laughs> Yeah. She's like this too. Shares with food. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Share love with food. Yeah, that's right. Uh, my my kids didn't get in on that one with me. That was not in my legacy. <laughs> but my grandmother, she shared her love with food, and she would bake her cinnamon rolls every Friday, and she would choose somebody in the church or a neighbor, and she would take it to them, and everybody, I mean, they were amazing, and she, they would all ask her for her recipe, and she says, "I'm not giving you my recipe, yes. but I'll give you the recipe of." Living with Jesus and yes, what He's done in my life. And amen. That's how she shared it. Powerful testimony. Yeah. She wow. Was, she was quite the amazing little thing. Well, you know, our testimonies live on past us. They, they do. do. 
because I've, I've never had the privilege and honor of meeting Rocky's grandparents, but I've heard testimony after testimony <laughs> after testimony. And maybe, I hope we get to hear more of them tonight as, oh, we, yeah. as we move forward. <laughs> here. So powerful, powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that makes it pretty clear. How, how, do, how does this affect the spread of the gospel? Hey, this is the real deal. The gospel will change your life. It would change the way you treat other people. It would, it would change the way you deal with situations and things that happen in your life. And people are watching. Mm -hmm. And so they want what you got. So powerful. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Number, number three, what are some of the legacies you have in your own family? I think this is where it's going to get really good here. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, who would like to go first? Go ahead, if you ask. Well, go ahead, Bert. and I, I have to admit, I've seen Rocky's notes, and I did. I can't believe, but we each talked about two sets of grandparents mm -hmm. that okay. were a little different from yes. each other. So my mom came from a, a family that were longtime Sabbath keepers. Um, it was just a part of who they were. Mm -hmm. um, she, my grandma, her mom, loved music. She loved to cook. She was very outgoing and social. Um, she loved music. She played the piano. But from the time I have any memory at all, she was in a wheelchair. And my grandma wrote stories mm -hmm. um, about her life and how God had protected and, and cared for their family. And um, she often would talk about her desire for heaven and in a new body, I one that was healthy that and could walk picture, again. Picture, yeah. On the other side of the coin, my dad's family, they were Sabbath keepers by the time I came along, but my great-grandfather came from the Netherlands as yeah. a member of the Dutch Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. But he was a Bible scholar, mm -hmm. and he studied himself into believing in the Bible Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And with his family, grown children and all, stood up in the Dutch Reformed Church and said, my family and I will be keeping the Sabbath wow. in our home. Took a lot of courage to Took do that. Took so much courage. Yeah. And it was, he, he suffered a loss because his brothers disowned him and changed their name. A lot of peer pressure. Uh, um, for him, so I... From from that perspective, I felt that he had such courage yeah. to stand mm -hmm. for that he would put God in what God thought of him for as his because he exactly. felt like God was telling him, "I want you to, right. to honor the Sabbath." And, and so I felt and like so there's been that. such a rich heritage from both sides that we lived with in our home. Yeah. On a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. coming from both of those. Yeah. And that had a huge impact on who you are and the, and, and the picture that you've got of who God was. One, one, one thing that you said was about your grandmother that was just awaiting the picture of, of Jesus Christ coming. And in, in, in a day that there, Revelation 21 verse 4, a day that there won't be no more pain That's or right. suffering or sickness or tears or death. And and that is what the Bible tells us. Paul says our conversation should be toward heaven. And when we're going through struggles in life, probably the biggest legacy that we can pass to our children is don't don't focus on the problem. Mm -hmm. Focus on the problem solver. She actually uh, wrote a song about it. Oh, you know, wow. she wrote music, she wrote stories. Yes. You know, all with that hope. Yeah, and that'll get you through the hard times. I, mm -hmm. I love that. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Good there. I, I think so. One of the most important things we can pass on to our children is is in our grandchildren is about looking toward heaven. Yes, there's going to be hard times here on this earth, but you know what? We got a day coming really soon that Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. There won't be no more of that. He's going to help you through that. I like to tell people this: this road you're walking down, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, no matter how tough it is. You know, really, again, it can get really tough. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, this road you're walking down will eventually lead to heaven. Right? And when you get there, you're not going to say, Oh, Jesus, it was just too hard for me. Why did you choose this road and this path for me? No, you're going to say, Heaven was cheap enough. Heaven was cheap enough. So, powerful legacy mm -hmm. there. So, mm -hmm. what well, about you? Like Bert, I came from a, a long legacy of Sabbath keeping grandparents on both sides yeah and um one side was the more preacher side of things and you know they were very 
rules oriented and older fashioned and still had their place in my life as far as all the stories and, and the scriptures that we learned from them. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the other side of my grandparents, they, they weren't that way at all. They lived their life as an example of what it's like to be, have Jesus in your life. Yeah. And they just did it all with love. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we learned that as kids, that even as young kids watching both sides, which one was more effective with the family and with us. And so we've tried to live the, the love side of things more, yeah. but I appreciate both being in my life yeah. Um, yeah. and having that in, balance. In, yep. um, but I, yeah. I definitely know that everyone gravitated towards my grandparents that lived life for the love of Jesus, sharing and they just had this aura about them. They did. <laughs> well, you know, nobody, no, nobody likes to be around someone that's just all they do is just point out mm -hmm. the, the rules or the negative mm -hmm. and the positive, or, or try. You know, it's the love of God. Mm -hmm. I actually lived out that. That's what makes Jesus attractive. Right. And, well, if you think um, about marriage, that. her grandparents. Uh, <laughs> They didn't care where they were. They would get up to do something in church together, and yeah. they'd be smooching at the pulpit. Oh, yeah. You know, I and, heard stories and, of and <laughs> talking, <laughs> telling people how much they loved each yeah. other always. Yeah, they were I, a great example of you know staying active in the church. They always were into the music. My grandma played the piano, and my yeah. grandpa played the saw. Uh huh. You know, like the saw, okay. the wood yeah. that you saw yeah. with, yes. with and, yeah. and they had their duets, and they did. So they taught Sabbath school and they went on mission trips with Maranatha and they just were so active. It was just part of their life. Yeah. And they were also very active in their community and their groups and shared Jesus just yes. outside of the church yeah. as well. Yeah. And so we watched them do that and they were always having fun and um, they were very involved in their family's life too. They knew yeah. what each one of us kids, none of us lived with them until they moved here in the last 10 years of their life. Uh -huh. But we knew, they knew everything about us. They were so involved in our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, I brought a picture. Oh good, that when yeah. We, when all, each of their grandchildren turned 12, yes. they gave us a picture here. of Let me Jesus. Hold it up here. And wrote a special note on the back to us that was so special. And this one you is read even... That? Can yeah, you read the note? I could try you without crying. Do you want me to but read it? But it says, okay, yeah, yeah, this is from, you know, now you can do the math because this is from 1977 and I just told you I was 12. But uh, it says, to our dear granddaughter, Rocklin, you are so happy. we are so happy that you have decided to follow Jesus and be baptized. May you always be the sweet girl that you are today, and may God bless you. We love you, your grandparents, Grandma and Grandpa Curtis. Okay. And that's been special to me. Yeah, I love Here the it picture. A I lot love of years later. Jesus and, knocking on your yeah, heart's door. Uh, yeah. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. Jesus is knocking mm -hmm. at our heart's door. Oh, yeah, and, and they so, had to tell us the story about there's no doorknob. Yeah, on there yeah. because we have to open the door and let oh, him in. Oh, I see that. Yeah, there, there's not. Mm -hmm. He, he, he does. We have to let him in. We have he to can't let him just in. Come in on his own, you know. And so what? it came with the story. So they were always involved yeah. with us kids, and and we knew that we were special to them, and they taught us that we were also special to Jesus. Yeah. So. so can you think of anything more special <laughs> than to to tell? Your, your grandchild that Jesus loves him and, and he's knocking at your heart's door, honey. He's, he really cares mm -hmm. about you. And that, that stuck with you because oh, she's yeah. probably 30 now. Exactly. And, and uh, <laughs> stuck with her a long time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah. And Powerful. they always expressed God and Jesus and included him in their marriage. And it shone through with their example of they were never too far apart. Yeah. And if anyone ever asked them, you know, what the secret was to their long 77 year marriage, grandma would stand up first and say, just sharing everything together, having breakfast every morning with Jesus. Yeah. And that was their Bible study time was breakfast with Jesus. And taking a jacuzzi tub bath every night together. I was wondering if you were going to share that one. <laughs> that, she I had a sense of that humor that, like no other, but that was always her secret yeah. to, to marriage. And they That's just right. made marriage fun, and, and they've been a great example to my kids and grandkids. So, Hallelujah. Um, yeah, what a special. good legacy. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful legacy. You know, I, and it, you know I, I won't take a lot of time here, but I too have had a legacy 
I, my I, my two grandmothers were were just powerful, and they were kind of both sides. They 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 uh, we uh, they were not uh, Sabbath keepers, but uh, they loved the Lord. And as a matter of fact, there's probably more people out there that don't know about the Sabbath, uh, and love Jesus, than, than people that do. And mm-hmm. and, and so uh, we just happen to be belong to the Seventh Day Adventist Church. But uh, my grandmothers both loved the Lord with all their heart, and and uh, they they had different personalities. One of them was more of a visual, you know, you've seen the Bible in her, in her lap and, and she would share it and she would quote the Bible. Uh, uh, my grandfather was a Baptist preacher and, and, and so um, they, they, they had the, the structure there and, and loved the Lord with all their heart. My other grandmother on my dad's, that was on my mom's side, on my dad's side, was, was more of the lady, you might not see the Bible in her lap, but it was in her heart. Mm-hmm. And you could tell the way, the way she treated everyone, and so I, I've got a lot in common with that. And then, and then God blessed me with a precious wife too that has started legacies in our own home. I was not the spiritual role model in our home. My wife was the spiritual role model in our home, and and she's the one that that <laughs> encouraged us to bring Jesus in our day to day life, and she's the one that carried our children to to church and to to Wednesday night Bible study and things like that and and um and I would not be in encouraged prayer. I would not be here right now if it were not for the legacy of faith of my wife who rather than just uh, give up on me because I was a scoundrel to be married to in the first 7 years of our marriage, but she didn't give up and, and she she just clung to, uh, clung to God and the promises and God was able to work a miracle in our life. So we are starting a new legacy and I'll talk a little bit more about that here after a while. So any more any more comments on on our on fam, our own family? That's we did really good there. All right. So really I told you they they're bringing a lot to the table here. Uh, and so number 4, what kind of impact had they had on your life your uh, your your in your children's life? Now, uh, talking about these legacies, these grandparents and parents what kind of impact have they had on your life? And I want to say right now, I know both of these ladies really well. Like I said, they're two of my best friends, and, and they are they are just Christ-like role models to me. And so I know that something has happened in their life. And I'm not putting them up on a pedestal. I'm putting no. Jesus on a pedestal, okay? Mm-hmm. And they both come from different walks, too. But what kind of impact has, has these legacies had on your life personally? Well... You know, I, I was trying to think of something specific mm-hmm. um, uh, to do with that. And I was drawn back to the time when I was in high school. <clears throat> you know, we grew up learning to be obedient. That that was very important. Um, our work ethic was important and being trustworthy and and kind to others. That That was all a part of the fabric of our family. But when I got to high school, something happened in our family to where we started just naturally gathering in the living room at night. When Once it was dark and we couldn't work outside anymore or whatever it was we were going to do, before everybody went to bed, we would end up sitting in the living room and just talking. <clears throat> I come from a family with a pretty strong sense of humor, and we did a lot of laughing a lot of sharing. In is your last name Walton? <laughs> no. You would get that if you were about my age. The Waltons. Go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, um, we were about that poor. So, um, but we um, we shared what had happened during our day. Yeah. And what began to occur was this level of trust between our parents and us kids. And it became a safe place to talk. Okay, yeah. Even, you know, I remember very specifically, my dad had some situations going on with his work that were um, difficult and touchy. And I remember being so shocked that he was sharing this with us. Now, we were instructed um, that... This was to stay with <laughs> us. Yeah. So he, there was a trust involved. But that was what amazed me was that that he trusted us. And throughout the rest of my teenage years, 
um, when an opportunity would arise for me to go somewhere with friends or to do something, um, I began to be allowed to make those decisions. Um, and it dawned on me that the trust they had placed in mm. me was something that I did not want to break. Um, because I valued the fact that they valued me enough yes. to share. Mm -hmm. And it bonded our family in, to me, a very unique and special way. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully Brian and I, and he grew up in, you know, a similar fashion, I believe, that we did that with our girls. Yeah. You know. I love that and it, And it provides yeah. for two-way conversation mm -hmm. it, it seemed safe for us to go to them and tell them yeah and my friends during those years really envied that yeah many of them they didn't have that with their parents mm -hmm. so that is something i have actually really valued that i gained <clears throat> from my parents i love that bird trust trust builds trust it does that that, that it the trust the legacy of trust. You know, people that are probably the most shaky mentally are people that don't trust other people. If you're always paranoid about like uh, not trusting this person, or trust you know, it's really not healthy for you mentally because right. you you become scared. Mm -hmm. That that is a very good legacy. And uh, and when you and when you and and I've heard this said when you can't like Cindy for example, and I won't go into detail on this right now. But when she couldn't trust me, she trusted God mm -hmm. to take care of me. And I, I love that, that legacy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. That's wonderful. Rocky? Yeah, I, the impact they had on uh, both my parents and, and grandparents both and, and beyond was just that, like Bert said, the safe place to be raised mm -hmm. and we never felt we always felt the positivity of what it was to go to church every week and to keep God in our lives yeah. and um, have a Christian education and and all of that and it it had a, a big impact on on my brother and I growing up and so I I'm hoping <laughs> and I do truly feel that you know with that example <laughs> of raised some some pretty terrific boys Yep. And they both have married some very God-loving, mm -hmm. Jesus-filled women. Praise the Lord. And I have great granddaughters now who are getting to the age of 12 and, and <laughs> ready God. to be baptized. Yes, and, wonderful. You know, and so that legacy does yeah. go on down without you even realizing how much time has gone by. Yeah. You know, yeah. it really it is, it is amazing. So uh, a legacy, what we're learning then, has a huge ripple effect on generations mm -hmm. it, does it does matter it does matter it's good to invest in it mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in everything one thing that i was hearing from both of you is as deuteronomy chapter six that that bert started out in reading there how to put god invest in god uh you know this is an inheritance that we're passing down from generation to generation and when you do this the word safety come out from both of them Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a peace that Christians have, even going through storms, that other people don't have. To that's me, true. that's an incredible legacy. Because when you've got somebody that's going through a storm in their life and they don't have that safety net of God, mm -hmm. and they, 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 they're not able to see on the other side of this dark spot that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And when you've got God, you can you can see through the eyes of hope. I'm going to get through this. God's going to get me through this. And there's a peace involved there that, that the world don't have. But they, they do want. Um, my wife says, Cindy's always called it a, a safety fence. It's a, uh, no, she says an umbrella. An umbrella. She's telling me right now. She, <laughs> it's an umbrella of God's protection. And so as long as we stay under this umbrella of God's protection, He's going to keep us. Matter of fact, it's up to Him to do that. It's because He's promised that He would. So that's really good. Any other thoughts? 
before we move on? Um, just one, you know, you said about our children's lives and I was just thinking, and I didn't get a chance to call them today and ask them the, the actual question, but if you ask my kids or grandkids what they remember about their great grandmother, yeah, um, they would say it's her laugh, her sense of humor, her love for Jesus and her beautiful prayers. Uh -huh. And she could pray to Jesus like nobody I've ever heard and grandpa too. But even when she got Alzheimer's at the end, if you asked her to pray, she could be so stressed or not even know hardly your name. But yeah. if you asked her to pray, Eric, it just came out change. or she would calm. And our kids got to see that. So You know why I think she could do that, Rocky? Because she just, knew it was Jesus. In her. She right. knew Jesus. Uh, yeah. The disciples walked up to Jesus in, in Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. And uh, and. He was praying and like they caught him doing a lot, but they said something that's kind of shocking. They, they out of out of anything that they could ask Jesus to do, out of anything. I mean, Jesus, I want teach me to walk on water. I would have liked to have been able to do that. Uh, teach me, teach me how to work miracles. Teach me how to preach. Teach me in, on and on. But they said, teach me how to pray, because it was something about Jesus' prayer life that was different. They had, they all they had heard was the was the repetitious, dry, formal prayers, but the prayer life of Jesus was different. And and when you when when you when you have that kind of relationship with God, where you're talking to one as you're talking to one that's a father, mm -hmm. a family, one that you know this is I'm talking to to one who cares about me. It changes. It changes. Yes. And that that's yes. the picture I get there. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. Her, well, have, I was just thinking, you know, you I said something, has, yeah. <laughs> you could tell the very first time I, you talked me into doing this, um, it was, <laughs> I, mm. it was on joy. <clears throat> yes. And um, I, I'm thinking that, you know, you're talking about your grandparents and yeah. they were joyful people. And, and in our family, there's often been much laughter and much mm -hmm. joy. And and I remember so many times when Brian and I were first married and we lived in Texas with his parents and we'd go to church together. And one week, someone sitting behind us leaned forward and said, you Yagleys always have so much fun in church because we were laughing a lot. <clears throat> there were just little things that would tickle us. But we are drawn to joy. Yeah, We are drawn to joy. Mm -hmm. And inside of a family, that can turn everything around. Uh -huh. Yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you mentioned this earlier. As Christians, we should be the most joy-filled, hopeful people in the whole world. So yes. this, is, this is a good legacy we're talking about here. And right? that's why your kids enjoyed your grandmother's mm -hmm. prayers, mm -hmm. because they were hopeful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They were joy filled and hopeful. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna turn the table around a little bit. Uh because we're 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 thinking, because especially that's just the way it is. Maybe somebody's out there now thinking, Well, I I, I blew it, you know, I, I've not left that kind of legacy for my family. You know, what am I supposed to do here? So we want to look at this and uh, because we want to look at, at, at the full circle here. What if, what if my family legacy is sketchy? You know, what about if it is sketchy? What about, what about if I, there's no family legacy? It, maybe, maybe grandmother uh, had a legacy or maybe mom or dad had a legacy, but I have now realized uh, God has brought me here and I don't think it's an accident that there's going to be people watching right now that, 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 you, you didn't mean to. You just got busy, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you realize and you're convicted that maybe I'm not leaving that legacy here. So, what, what, what can we do about that? Who would like to jump on that one first? I guess I'll jump Go right ahead, on. Rocky. Well, in my case, yes. I that question hits straight to home. Um, I came from a long line of Christian legacy in my family on both sides as way far back as I can go, but the devil still wormed his way in yeah. and convinced me that, you know, I had, I should be worried about other things and he let, you know, he distracted and chased, um, everything that was, he told me anyway, was more important than staying 
with my family in a, a Jesus filled home and yeah. we left the church and mm -hmm. our lives with Jesus and decided it was more important to deal with hurt feelings and chase corporate careers and money and basically went into total rebellion for yeah. for 20 years. So yeah. no, our family legacy is kind of like a chain. It was really strong mm -hmm. all the way down. And my mm -hmm. kids were born when we had done that and, and they were in grade school age. And, um, you know, it, I think that chain, when we broke our link, because each link is like a generation, and when we broke that link, even though it's us still here and our kids and grandkids, without that chain being one whole piece, mm -hmm. you know, you, it, you don't realize what a hurt and what how, how worthless that chain is to, to now the rest of the generations. And so I'm just thankful that God didn't give up on me. I'm thankful he didn't Because, <laughs> you know, after um, having... He, you know, he kept that legacy in the back of my mind, even though we were gone for a yeah. long time. And mm -hmm. he, I just always knew. I still prayed. I yeah. still, you know, did the things that I, but, it, but it was for me. It wasn't yeah. for a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. It was yeah. more of, you know, the shallow prayers that really don't mean sure. anything. Yeah. And but I'm I'm thankful for that legacy because it still was there. And then through my family's intercessory prayers, I know my mother on her yeah. knees every day. Thank um, you, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> that we found Jesus again. Hallelujah. And, yeah. And it's a long story on how Jesus basically knocked me upside the head and and got us to to see things straight and come back. But he never uh, gave up. We realized him, because of the legacy that we had with my mm -hmm. grandparents mm -hmm. who lived a simple life but had so much joy that no matter how much we chased corporate titles or money or the shallow things in life, that wasn't going to make us happy like and have the joy in their, our lives like my grandparents had. Wow. And so I think that's what finally, once we lost them, mm -hmm. that's what woke us up. Yeah. Because it was like, wow. Yeah. I've got chill bumps. That was a powerful sermon <laughs> oh, you just gave there. Well, thank you. But Praise God. Yeah, I, we uh, went through a lot. So uh, if you had not had the legacy mm. that that you had in that chain before mm. you, you would not know mm. deep down inside what you were missing out on. No. And, and, and you came back. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, train up a child when he's young. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, to... to to yeah, so when they get the Lord, old, they will they not depart, old, from, not it. depart from, from it. I guess that explains yeah, that, that, I'm old now because I came back. <laughs> well, you're not but, that old, but, uh, but, yeah. but still, praise it, God, yeah. Rocky. What a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bert? Well, you know, I, I personally don't know any family uh -huh. that doesn't have something. Yes. So... Um, even though outwardly you might not see something in me that I can tell the same kind of story mm -hmm. that Rocky does, I know that I've had broken places. Mm -hmm. I know that I have people in my family that have broken places and things that have happened. Um, and I know that in raising my children that... I have made mistakes and I haven't taught them everything they should know or I haven't been the example that I should be and I have had to learn to say I'm sorry uh, that yeah. I've made mistakes mm -hmm. um, and so that is um, that is the case with being human mm -hmm. we all have something sketchy some of us just hide it a little bit better than yeah. others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe our chain doesn't completely disconnect, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's hanging by a thread yeah. mm, for all of us. Yeah. That's a good way to Good points. It. Good points. I want to take just a second here. If, if, you're, if you're watching out there, uh, we, we are all a big team for Jesus. And, and through, through the past year, we have got a family here, uh, mm -hmm. basically what I'm calling a church family, the body of Christ. And we help each other. And a lot of times you will share inputs. 
maybe maybe you have experienced uh, something that's really special about a legacy maybe from a family or something you went through that you'd like to share if so please in your comments mm -hmm. send that to uh to cindy she's waiting on you to send a comment on facebook and we would love to hear your comment um but talking about the 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 uh, a, a legacy that, that might be sketchy if that is you you are in good company mm -hmm. just like bert says everybody everybody has got a skeleton in their closet but i mean if we go back to our very first parents adam and eve look at adam and eve they blew it they mm -hmm. did but praise god for his grace you know and, and you just follow it forward there adam and eve and then and then and then what about what about noah what about Noah? I mean, the the new family head. I mean, especially after afterwards, we know that there's 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 always something out there. And then even even Abraham, uh, you know, had his own own flaws there, uh, having trust in God completely. So, um, you know, I think that 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 the lesson here is that that God can take our mistakes or our messes. And he can make a message out of it. So Rocky, yes, uh, you you broke away for 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 some years, but but what you went through, you can now share with your children and your grandchildren, and go, oh, uh, you know, this is this this hurts my heart, and I realize, you know, what I missed out on. I it, I could have I could have my life. It, I should I could have been a, a, even a better parent to mm -hmm. you. You know, I could have helped you uh, establish some. Uh, an inheritance, a foundation that will even help you more so to get through harder times and everything like that. So God can. He's, he's got the ability to do this. He can take what what the devil meant for bad and he can turn it in for good, Rocky. And he can do that and will do that. I can't help but think about the parable of the lost sheep <laughs> and the value that was placed, you know, on that one that was lost That's right. and found again. Mm -hmm. um, it makes that so much sweeter and so much more special. I know in my life personally, you know, I shared earlier, my legacy was not good. Uh, uh, I was raised in a home that, that did put God first. My mother carried us to church every Sunday. I mean, she was faithful. She would carry kids and, 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 and she taught us about the Lord, but I just went away and, and, and basically just got into life. And with my younger, with my boys, you know, life was one big party. And they, they, that was the legacy I left for them early on. We had a game room, a pool table and a foosball table and a jukebox. And, and we, we had the big grill. We barbecued the you know, the, all these things and grilled and everything. And uh, that was a legacy that I left for them. And it, it uh, telling them basically that what was important was having fun. And I so regret that because, you know, real life. But on the inside, I was not having that much fun. I, on the inside, I mean, I might have from the outside. But let me tell you what, I woke up with a headache in the morning and a sick stomach. And, and I had problems and you know, huge problems. And I so wish that I had taken the time to tell my boys about Jesus, but I didn't. But now I can tell my boys. I can tell them, say, you know what? There, 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 is, there is a slippery slope and, and don't go down that road. And I can tell them because I've been there and I've done that. You know, I've lived life with God and I've lived life uh, apart from God. Let me tell you what, Jesus is the truth. He is the life and he is the way. And the only true happiness and only true contentment comes when you are abiding in Jesus Christ in a relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's hey, never too late. Yeah. And so I, we can take, God can take our legacies, even though they're sketchy, and he can turn them into good here. Okay, I've got some. Brian. Uh, Brian is, is away traveling now, right now in, uh, with work. And he says, he, this comment, he says, we all have skunks in the woodpile. Yes, you're right. <laughs> but the sweet fragrance of God's love always wins. And I amen that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, those 99 you, sheep, they had, to, they had to walk. They followed the shepherd, but they had to walk. Yeah. And, but he carried 
Yes. That hundredth one. He did. He didn't carried he? him. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. He didn't scold it. You, that's not the picture that you get. He didn't scold him for running off or anything. It was all love, like Brian he said. Picked him his up love. and nurtured that baby yeah. back into the fold. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's what he did for me. And that's what he did for you, Rocky. Mm-hmm. And that's what he'll do for you also. No matter how far you've strayed away, no matter how bad your legacy is, God can take what's happened in the past and he can turn it into good because he's God. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're 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 getting we're winding down here. I wanna what what um so let's just say and uh how do we how do we take our legacies now? If maybe we didn't have a good legacy, we had a bad one. How can we start our own family legacy? Maybe that's something that you never realized the priority on or how important it is. And and how can we start our own one? Now, before we get into while y'all thinking about that, Wendy has, has shared something with us here. Uh, my Gramps' legacy to me is prayer. Mm-hmm. They used to they used to pray uh, they they used to pray for the for the whole family by name every morning. He had he had miracles happen. So also they they witnessed miracles happening uh, because because of prayer. So praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Yes. So, uh, all right, we got one more here. Okay, we've got another one here. This is a very good one. Faith, faith. Thank you for sharing. I have a legacy from both sides of my family. Uh, both of them are, are Seventh Day Adventists. Through it all, the devil has worked so hard to pry me from this legacy. But God is so much stronger, and over time, has has proved His promises are real. Great is His faithfulness here. Now, myself and my sister soon. Will be married to men that men uh, that that um, that came from outside the, the, the Seventh Day Adventist Church and are now starting to commit uh, their faith to following Jesus all the way. Praise God! Thank you, Faith. Praise the Lord! Thank you for sharing that. So, um, all right. Well, now let's look at now. How can we start that legacy? We we realize tonight uh, it's not an accident that you're watching. God has you watching for a reason. Because he wants you to pass down that family legacy uh, to your family and also to your friends. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how can we start a new family legacy, ladies? Well, it's never too late to start one. Yeah. Um, and just giving your life to to God and starting to live a relationship with Him. Mm-hmm. And you're going to instantly start your legacy because everybody around you is going to be watching Right. And seeing how your life has changed, yeah. and you'll instantly and and even like repairing a legacy that we broke that chain and trying to repair that legacy is just you know go to God and ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. and for you know not only did I lose twenty years of my life as in a relationship with Jesus, um, I kept that from my boys, you yeah. know, in in their years of development and Mm -hmm. so asking their forgiveness like Bert was saying learning to ask your children for forgiveness very good point and gaining that trust back with them yeah and just living as an example again and thankfully they were raised with a good foundation and they always had the example of the grandparents around them so they never lost that either yeah and so I think you just can I want to highlight something, Rocky, that I know that you know, but maybe others don't know. Uh, yes, Rocky uh, might have went away, but she she's she's being very transparent to her family about how important it is to have Jesus Christ in her life and how mm-hmm. thankful she is to have Him back in her life. And that and she, takes courage. And, and that takes courage yeah. to do that, to, to, to just yeah. be honest and say, you know what, I blew it. But, but, but you know what? Jesus never gave up on me, and He'll never give mm-hmm. up on you too. And now that has had a huge impact on your children and grandchildren because right. they are also that the, the link has been welded by together. Right. And now they're right. studying the Bible, and want mm-hmm. their, and and your grandchildren, like mm-hmm. you said, are studying, wanting to give their life to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So praise right. God. And we're always a work in progress. Yeah, you know that's right. We just keep keep going and keep. Learning and living. In that, probably the most important thing too that we can pass down to our children is, hey, nobody's perfect. Mm-mm. Only Jesus is perfect. We're going to make mistakes, we're, we're, and we've got to even trust our kids to to make mistakes on their own, don't we? Uh, because mm-hmm. because God trusts us. 
but we learn. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, by, by saying, you know, we, we're not putting Christianity up on a pedestal and say, you know, you're, if, you live, if you're a Christian, you're not going to have to go through this and you're not ever going to fall and everything mm -hmm. like that. Boy, that's setting it up too high. And that's, that's one of the most encouraging things to me, even about legacies here. I said, I said if you've got a sketchy legacy, well, you're in good company. All throughout the Bible, this whole Bible here is about imperfect people. Imperfect people yes, chasing a perfect God mm -hmm. that loves them, that, that cares about them, and will never give up on us. And His grace is bigger than our sin. His grace is bigger than our past. Mm -hmm. And it's His love that draws us and woos us, even when we messed up. I think that's a powerful legacy that we can pass down mm -hmm. and start a new legacy. So, Bert? So, as in the last couple of years, I've had um, a health issue that granted me a lot of time to sit and think. And I wondered what the point of my life was. And I decided that it was to reflect Jesus to those in my family, to those around me. And I decided that I wanted to be a collector of people, not stuff. Mm -hmm. Because all the stuff is just left for somebody else to clean up yeah. when you're gone. And I thought about the text, Proverbs 22, 1, that says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. And I thought about the trust in my family and the fact that when they trusted me the way they did, I would have never done anything to harm the family name. I want to remember that Everything I do reflects on those who went before me. I want, I, I want to be known as Roberta Hostetter Yeagley Christian. Amen. Amen, Bert. You yeah. know what? We've been doing this now for, for over a year, right? And I think tonight has been my most special one. <laughs> Rocky and Bert. We have got to get these two ladies back, don't we? <laughs> no. That's right. You did a wonderful job here. Uh, I think what we did is we we put we put you know a lot of times when you just share the you know the the the, the straight doctrine, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a skeleton. We put flesh on it. Mm -hmm. We put sinew. We put muscle on it tonight. We put hands and feet, and we applied it to our life. And so, uh, praise God. So I, I want to close in prayer. And um, I've got two prayer requests. Myra, Myra, one of our one of our part of our body of Christ here that's faithful. Her and Larry to join us each week. Uh, her sister Beverly, uh, we want to lift up Beverly in prayer and keep her in prayer. And then also um, uh, Nanny, my my mother in law, who is one of our most faithful mm -hmm. church. Uh, family here, a friend of hers, Betty Grubbs, is on event with COVID. COVID mm -hmm. is still real and it's still out there, friends, and still hurting people. And so, I want to lift up Betty. So, um, what we could do here? Uh, uh, why don't we just have a uh, a prayer? Anything else that y'all can think of that we can pray for? And I'll close this in prayer. Yeah, just our families. Just our families. Mm -hmm. Okay. All, All of right. Our families. All of our families. All of your families. That's right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, this has been a good night, and, and Lord, you are so faithful. We ask that you would show up, and you did. You showed up in our hearts. You showed up in our hearts. Everyone that's going to be watching, and even in the future, we know that you that through your Holy Spirit, that you're speaking to families, you're speaking to marriages, because you want them to leave a legacy, and you are the legacy, putting you in the center. And so we're asking for a blessing on all the families, all the marriages, that's out there and relationships out there that you would bless and that you would that you would empower us and that you would put on our heart the importance of leaving a legacy that will last throughout eternity. Thank you so much for hearing our prayer. We lift up we lift up Beverly to you again. We lift up Betty to you. And Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to close with thanking you for not giving up on us. Thanking you that your grace is bigger than our past. Thanking you that right now 
we can start a new legacy that will last for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And remember, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.